2024? Why are these 2018 Mac Minis so much money? If you can believe it, people are still paying more than $1,000 for a six-year-old machine. In the world of tech, that's unheard of. Especially since in 2020, Apple introduced the new M1 silicone chip to replace the Intel chips. Now, I've been an Apple user for a long time, but why are these old machines still selling for almost as much as a new Mac Mini? I bought a maxed out 2018 Mac Mini and have been using it for the past month to see if it can still perform. Now I did another video where I picked up a 2014 Mac Mini to see how it handled my daily tasks. If you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description and you can check it out after you watch this. When I was researching that video, I originally looked at the 2018 Mac Mini because I thought it would be super cheap. Boy, was I wrong. Now I've been so gung-ho about how awesome Apple silicone chips have been, I just thought previous ones were something people would never want, especially since we now have the M2 and M2 Pro for the Mac Mini. So why would anyone spend seven, eight, or even a thousand dollars for a used machine? Now, if you aren't familiar with older Mac Minis, Apple did have a bunch of different pricing tiers for people to choose from. Almost too many, in my opinion. Now, there were three processors available, the i3, the i5, and the i7. The storage options were 128, 256, 512, one and two terabytes. The RAM options were eight, 16, 32, or 64 gigs. On a side note, unlike the storage in these machines, the memory was still upgradable after the fact, so you could save a little money and upgrade if you needed more memory. Now, the machine I was eyeing up, of course, was the i7 with the max amount of storage. I thought if I got one with less memory, I can upgrade it afterwards and save some money. Well, I quickly learned that if a machine had two terabytes of storage, it was either gonna have 32 or 64 gigs of memory already, which meant the price tag ranged from eight to a thousand, if not more. Now, I was not going to pay that much money for a machine that was six years old. I didn't think anyone would. Well, they would. On eBay, you have the ability to search sold listings and see the final price. Check out some of these. 900, 1100, 900, 999, and 850? Then you could find the odd one that goes for a lot less. After some looking around, I did find an i7 with 64 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage for 599. I reluctantly picked it up. Now for some testing. After having a good experience with the much older 2014, I figure this should be just fine. It should come as a surprise to no one that this worked just great for everything. And yes, it was faster than the 2014. I loaded it up with over 40 Chrome windows, Final Cut, Photoshop, etc. I had five YouTube videos playing at the same time. Now the system numbers were 19 to 21% CPU load and 119 to 121 degrees. As far as the usage goes, 94% on Chrome and 60% on Final Cut. Now jumping over to Photoshop, while I'm using it, it does ramp up to 31%, but it still had 28 gigs of memory left. I really got this loaded up and the stutter was extremely minimal. Now moving around this video, which was 35 minutes, it did buffer for about a second or so. All the other videos that were playing skipped around just fine. Now, the fan. It has been running this whole time, as you can hear now. Now it is pretty loud now, but I, I have all this stuff going on. Now I just kept using Final Cut during all of this and making some changes. It worked great. A lot of times when I would add a transition or text to it, it might jump a bit and it needs to be rendered out. Just for giggles, I made this video 11 minutes long with some edits to it and started rendering out at 11.46 a.m. The second I hit record, I was messing with the zoom and it, it finished. The time was 11.59 a.m. 13 minutes to do all that, it really isn't that bad at all. Now, when I was just doing normal things where I had a window or so open, the CPU was doing next to nothing. 
Now, those of you that watch my other Mac Mini video might notice I'm using the same monitor and I said this. Now I am using a 34 inch LG ultrawide monitor with this system. I wanted to try that ultrawide aspect for more room instead of getting two monitors. And don't worry, I didn't buy a $500 monitor for a $200 system. I am gonna be using it for something else down the road. Yeah, I, I'm using this monitor for this 2018 machine. In all seriousness, I really do use it with my laptop. However, I have been extremely impressed with how well this machine has been working. By the way, this monitor is an LG 34 inch, 21 by nine, WQHD 3440 by 1440. It's not 4K, it's more like 3.5K. Now the 2018 Mac Mini actually has some really good power for monitors. Since this machine is outfitted with four Thunderbolt 3 ports, you can use a single monitor for up to 5K at 60 hertz with it. Now, there are also a number of other configurations that you can do with this that do include up to three monitors, but I'll go ahead and leave that info in the description if you wanna check it out. Now, this machine also has two USB-A 3.0 ports, one HDMI 2.0, and the 10 gigabit ethernet port, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, when I bought this monitor, I wanted to have HDMI so it was easy to hook up to the 2014, as well as my MacBook Pro that had an HDMI port. Now, I'm totally happy with that monitor and it works great for me. So, why in the world would you want to buy a machine that is six years old for more than what the M2 Mac Minis are selling for, even with some upgrades? Now, that's why I wanted to pick one of these up to see what's the reason. Now, let's keep in mind, in 2018, fully loaded as I bought this machine, brand new, $4,199. Now, I don't know if I would have paid that for a Mac Mini. I probably just would have leaned towards an iMac back then. Now, I wanna try something here. Let's spec out the best M2 that you can get, which in this case is the M2 Pro. Mac Mini with the upgraded 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU, 32 gigs of memory, and this machine can do up to eight terabytes of storage, plus the 10 gigabit ethernet, and we have a grand total of $4,499. 300 bucks more than the latest and greatest, but if you compare it to the 2018, it has six more terabytes of storage. Do you need that? Absolutely not. But I wanted to max it out to do like for like. You could do two terabytes on this brand new machine and only spend $26.99. Now, of course, I could go on with different specs to be less than what it was in 2018, but I gotta say, the M2 Pro machine might last even longer than the machines lasted before. So back to the question that I asked at the beginning of this video. Why is the 2018 so much money? Well, it's clear Apple pricing this thing back then at $4,200 with what was the standard is still worth paying that today. Should you spend $1,000 for this six-year-old machine? Hell no. I'm impressed that it still commands that, but I'm extremely disappointed because it's 100% not worth the price. If you could find this machine for three or $400 with two terabytes of storage, 64 gigs of memory, that still says something for a machine today. Granted, the fans are gonna be a little bit loud and it might run a little bit hot, but regardless, three or 400 bucks, it's, that's a pretty good deal. I think for that price, it's a good starter machine to do more than just the basics if you wanna save some serious cash. Now, if you wanna see how the 2014 Mac Mini held up nine years later, go ahead and check out this video right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you won't miss my next video when I post it. See ya.